Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how I installed this high performance diesel top mount intercooler. Alright, so on first a proper inspection of the box, you can see we've got a hood scoop. <clears throat> This is the big intercooler here with the thermo fan attached to it. That's really exciting. Um, yeah, what do we got? The wiring for the fan, heater hose, seal for the bonnet scoop. This is all the mounting for the intercooler, new hoses. Um, I'm not even sure where this goes yet, but oh, there you go. They even give you a stubby holder. Oh, that's great. Um, so yeah, this all looks like really great stuff. And yeah, I'm so keen to get into it. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so just some things to be conscious about before I get into this. Uh, as far as I know, we won't be needing to get underneath the car, so don't need to worry about getting over the pit or putting it on a hoist. Um, this is gonna be your working space here. Um, make sure you've got uh, something ready. I'm gonna put some planks of wood over those trusses um, because we're gonna have to take this bonnet off eventually to cut a hole in that for the scoop, obviously. So make sure you've got plenty of space for that. And um, yeah, all right, let's get into it. So the first few things you'll need to do are really quick and easy. You'll need to remove the pipe that goes from the turbo to the crossover pipe. You'll need to get the accelerator cable out of the way and then just go ahead and take that crossover pipe off. If this heater hose was to stay here, it would interfere with or possibly rub through on the intercooler. HPD have been kind enough to give us a replacement heater hose, so we're just going to go ahead and put that on instead. Next I'll be bolting on the intake manifold adapter onto the intake manifold. This fit on pretty easily with these screws that came out of the crossover pipe. This is your fan temperature switch and pretty simply it bolts onto the designated spot on the intercooler. Once you've done that, it's time to start looking at the frame and the intercooler itself. First you want to loosely bolt the frame together and then stick the intercooler in and loosely bolt that in there. Once everything fits nicely, you can go ahead and tighten it all up, ready to put on top of your engine. At this point, you want to get the intercooler as central as you possibly can because this is going to essentially determine where you put the scoop or even if it doesn't, it's going to determine how evenly the scoop sits on your intercooler. So try and get this central for it to look nice and for it to function properly. And then you can go ahead and mark out your four bolt holes. We decided that now is a good time to take the bonnet off so that we can get the drill in there and drill out those two back mounting holes. So, 
So in the instruction booklet, it actually says you may need to trim some ends off these silicon hoses. And as you can see, we actually need to get this in here still uh, for that bit to fit on the in on the intercooler. So I will have to trim a little bit off that. So that sits a bit lower and I'll possibly have to trim a bit off the top as well. So this sits a bit further back like, like that. Now get that soldering iron nice and toasty because it's relay time. So as far as the relay goes, this is to control the thermofan via the uh, heat switch or a manual switch if that's what you choose to do. So pretty simply, we've got red and black, which are positive and negative. We've got a blue wire that is power directly to your fan over here. So I've run that through the conduit there. You've got a black wire that goes to, that earths your fan out. Um, pretty simply, and then finally, your green wire goes from the relay to one side of the temperature switch and the other side goes back to ignition power, uh, which I've actually got coming straight out of my fuse box here. So I found a fuse with ignition power that wasn't in use and I've run that green wire, that lime green wire to one side of that temperature switch and the other one goes back into the darker green wire that goes into the relay. So now that I've put all that on, I've only just found where the boost gauge uh, output is. And that's actually on the first piece we put on down here. So I wish I'd done that for a start, but anyway, if you've got a boost gauge, go ahead and screw that line in there. Otherwise I imagine you'll have to cap it somehow. Once you've reattached your accelerator cable, you can go ahead and put the battery terminals back on and then it's time to turn the key and make sure that everything's running right. Now that we've got the intercooler side of things working, it's time to start on the bonnet scoop. The first thing you're going to want to do is take that soundproofing off and then it's time to get into a lot of measuring. The first thing you're going to want to work out is dead centre, or at least that's what we did on my bonnet. We worked out the dead centre and then worked out exactly how far from either side the intercooler came in and went from there. Honestly, if you don't spend the next hour and a half doing measurements, you're probably doing it wrong. So after you've got a rectangle about the size of your intercooler core central on your bonnet, you basically want to go ahead and measure in 10mm inside of the marks front and back and 20mm on the sides. You should have a rectangle that's about 410mm by 280mm. When you've done this, it's about time to start getting the cutting tools out.
Dad and I decided that before cutting the actual hole out, it'd be a good idea to go and do the reinforcements first. Especially considering you want these reinforcements cut back 20mm in every direction from the hole. This ensures that they're not going to interfere with the intercooler in any way. So we went and did that with the cutting disc on the angle grinder and then we got the jigsaw out and cut out the hole. Once the hole's cut, it's a good idea to put the sound deadening on top of this so that you can go and mark out the hole you'll have to cut in that. I'd recommend cutting a good 25mm back from each edge of the rectangle. This way there'll be no way it will interfere with the intercooler. Once you've done that, it's the satisfying job of putting the bonnet scoop on and bolting it down. I'd highly suggest on that first bonnet close that you make sure that nothing's going to interfere with the intercooler or any of the hoses before slamming the bonnet shut. And just like that, this HPD intercooler was installed. Now there's two things you'll probably notice after this install and that is firstly that your EGTs will be lower and secondly your boost is likely to drop. This is just because of the bigger pipes and bigger volume between the turbo and the intake manifold. When I go to get this tuned I'll make sure they wind it back up to 12 or 14 psi. Seriously is a really nice unit. I'm so happy with the quality of this. It's totally worth every dollar um, that I spent on it. It's, you know, I think it looks so tidy. It sits there so nicely. It was super easy to install. Um, and yeah, it's just, it has improved the EGT so much and I'm so keen to get it tuned and, you know, really put this thing to the test. Not to mention the bonnet scoop, I think looks really tidy. I know that some of you will wish I painted that white and I can tell you now, I probably will be in the very near future, but that's just how it is for now. But yeah, I am so happy with this intercooler kit. So I hope you guys found this video helpful today. Um, the next thing that I will be doing, obviously, is heading straight up to High Performance Diesel to get this tuned. And fingers crossed, I might be making a bit of a YouTube video about that. Um, if I don't get any footage up there, then I will definitely be doing a video on the comparison before and after the tune. Unfortunately, I don't have any dyno results for before I did this uh, turbo and intercooler conversion but it'll be very interesting to see the before and after tune figures anyway. As always guys, don't be afraid to shoot us a message through the comment section below. Find me on Facebook and Instagram. I'll be sure to get around to those questions and comments as soon as I can. Thanks so much for watching again guys, and I will see you in the next video.